This is a Pyramid regulated power supply, model PS12KX. I actually sold this brand new back in the mid 90s and it was returned because it didn't work right out of the box. It's been actually sitting in my garage for almost 30 years. And I thought, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this thing and see if I can get it going. It's brand new. I just did a warranty exchange, gave the customer another one, threw this one in the garage, and there it sat since probably 1995 when I had my CB shop. Here's what's going on with this thing. That's all I get, 0 0.04 volts out of this thing. No good. And I have a protection light right there. And the way this thing works is either you get the normal light or the protection light. So if you don't get the normal, you get the protection. I'll show you the circuit here in just a minute. So here's the circuit board. Not too much to it. I've already popped in a new LM723, although this one is a UA723, and I got the exact same results. Something's going on in the regulation circuit. I've checked the B plus out of the main filter caps. This little cap is what supplies the voltage to the LM723, or UA723 in this case. It does have a single pass transistor that drives the 2 and 3055s back here on the heatsink. There are two of them back there. So this thing should be able to supply 10 amps all day long, although the heatsink is, in my estimation, just a little bit small. There's the top view of the unit. So I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the LM723 out of this unit completely. And we'll go ahead and just check the voltages and maybe supply the drive voltage for this pass transistor, the driver transistor, and see if we have the correct feedbacks that it should have. Maybe that pass transistor is just bad. I'm not sure. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but for my ham radio and my CB radio equipment, I do like having extra power supplies available. So this is the schematic for this unit. So pretty simple. It looks like they're using two diodes in parallel. So they're still using a full wave bridge rectifier because they say D1, D2, D3, D4. And so this center tap lead actually becomes ground. They rectify that and filter it through two 4700 microfarad 25 volt caps and that becomes the collector source voltage for the two 2 and 3055 transistors. And then they have this full wave bridge rectifier set up with the negative going to the positive of the pass transistors and the positive being filtered through a 470 at 10 volt capacitor and that's the drive for the LM723. So they have actually separate power supplies for the outputs and for the regulator transistors. So the way this works is it has a fixed voltage reference right here that comes out on pin 6, goes right back into pin 5, into a comparator. Pin 4 is the feedback and it uses this VR1 is the adjustment. It uses the output voltage from the emitter of both of these transistors through a voltage divider and it feeds that back into pin 4. If the voltage is too low, it pumps this up, turns this transistor on, and causes more voltage to flow out pin 10 into the base of the TIP41C, which is the driver transistor, through the 1 in 4002 and the 18 ohm resistor in parallel through a couple of 2.2 base drive resistors and then out to the output terminal. So I'm not getting anything out. I've looked at pin 10, there's still nothing there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this chip completely out and supply an external voltage between ground and pin 10 and see if I get any voltage on the outputs. Maybe I got a bad transistor. It might be shorted. I'm not sure. The driver could be shorted. And yeah, here's how the red and green LED work. So there is the green LED right there, and there is the red LED. So as long as this is producing voltage adequate enough to turn the base of this transistor on over six tenths of a volt, so it's got a 27K resistor and a 5.1K resistor set up as a voltage divider circuit. When this base becomes higher than 0.6 volts, this transistor is going to turn on and it's going to clamp this voltage to ground to turn off the red LED. And because we have enough voltage over the divider, we have enough voltage to actually light the green LED. So it's kind of a very simplistic protection scheme that they have going on in this thing. So let's go ahead and pull this chip out of the circuit and I will supply on pin 10 probably about 15 volts because I'm going to drop six tenths of a volt here and six tenths of a volt here plus the drop across this resistor diode combo which is really only going to show up under load and I should get my 13 and so tenths volts out here. So let's go ahead and do that right now.
All right, so one thing that I noticed right off the bat when I got the chip out, it's got this dreaded glue that dripped down from the filter capacitors right here underneath the chip. Now this glue can become conductive over time. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape it away. Normally it scrapes off quite easily. Okay, I think that's gonna be just fine. Okay, so I thought the first thing I would do is go ahead and check the driver transistor. So we can go from the base right here to the collector. And I see a good junction. And base to emitter, I see a good junction. Collector emitter, I do not see a short. Just for the heck of it, let's see if we have any shorted capacitors, which I don't think we do. They still have a small charge in them. So that's okay. And I'm showing resistance, so that means it's not shorted. Let's go ahead and go back to the diode range and we will check the output transistors for shorts, which is gonna be hard to do because they've got these 2.2 ohm resistors in series with the base, but we can go from the base to the collector, which should be this lead right here. And I do see a junction there. And then base to emitter, which is gonna be the positive lead. And I don't see a junction. Oh, that's interesting. Could I just have bad output transistors? Yeah, check that out from the base to B plus. I do see a junction, but it's charging. But from the base to the emitter, I do not see a junction. That might be the whole problem. The output transistors are just bad. Well, let's go ahead and pull them off and check them on the MK168, see what it has to say. Okay, well, I've got the output transistors out. And once again, this company wanted to save heat sink compound like it was gold. I mean, that's, that's all they put on this thing just that little tiny droplet. Now the actual substrate for these units is right in this area here. So they would have done better if they would have put that droplet right there. And the same thing with this one, should have had the droplet right there. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and pull these little insulating leads off here. We'll go ahead and remove the mica insulators. And yeah, that's what we're left with. Okay, let's get the MK168 and do some tests. Okay, here we go. Got it connected base collector emitter. Let's hit the test button and see what we get. We show a diode between base and emitter. 0 0.602 volts, so that's about right. 4.9 microamps current and zero picofarads is the capacitance. Well, that one is definitely bad. Let's test the other one now. Okay, here we go. Second transistor test. That one actually checks good. NPN base collector emitter with a beta gain of 17. Why did it not test good in the circuit? That is really strange. Well, I don't have any 2 and 3055s, but I still have a couple of 2 and 3772s. So I'm gonna go ahead and slam those in there. We'll put some fresh heat sink compound on them, solder them up and give it a test. So here's the test on the new 2 and 3772s that are going in there. So that one has a gain of 32. I ordered these like a year ago to put in my Astrons. And I ordered a couple of extras. So 32 is perfectly fine for a voltage of 0.571 volts. And again, a 28 with another 0.572 volts on that one. Perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and put these in here and see if we can get this thing back up to normal operation. Okay, new transistors are installed. And I'm very happy with the amount of silicon heat sink compound that is oozed out between the insulator and the heat sink and the transistor and the insulator. I have all the insulator leads installed, the cross brace, which is the common collector. So I'll go ahead and solder the leads back up to this. I'll put a brand new LM723 in this thing and we'll see what it does.
Okay, new transistors are installed. They're all soldered on there. Everything's good. So let's go ahead and supply our base voltage to it now and see if we can get an output without the LM723 installed. All right, so we'll do a quick check to verify the integrity is correct. So base to collector, I see 0.491 and base to emitter, I see 0 0.508. So collector to emitter, I see charging perfectly fine. Let's reverse the leads. And once again, I see charging perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and power this thing up. We'll supply an external voltage to pin 10, which is right here, that goes to the base of the driver transistor and see if we get voltage on the output. Okay, power is supplied to the unit. And I do have my power supply set at current limiting of 70 milliamps because the LM723 claims a max output of 150 milliamps. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this voltage up slowly. And we'll get it up to 13.8 volts. Okay, so I'm supplying 15 volts into the unit right now to the base drive of the driver transistor and I'm getting exactly 13.8 volts out, which is perfectly fine. So I want to look at the feedback. Hopefully you can see this. I want to look at pin four and I should be seeing about five-ish volts on pin four of the feedback. Oh, and I've got 7.3 volts. That's a little higher than I expected, but nevertheless, this thing should regulate with that. So next I wanna look at pin 11 and pin 12 and make sure I have my LM723 drive voltage. So I do have 34 volts on 11 and 34 volts on pin 12. Perfectly fine. I'm gonna kill the power, I'm gonna discharge everything and we'll put a new LM723 in this and hopefully it fires up and works good. Okay, brand new LM723 is installed in the unit. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see if we get an output now. So I'm gonna put this in min-max. I'm just gonna pulse it on and off. And I see 13.45 max. We'll go back to min-max. Power on at 13.46. Let's go ahead and adjust the pot. Try to get 13.8 out of it. Well, that's probably going to be close enough, 13.83 volts. Next, we'll put it under a load and make sure it still outputs the voltage at load. Okay, here we go. I've got my dummy load connected to it. So I have five 12 ohm resistors right here, which are going to give me just over an amp at 13.8 volts. And I've got two 6 ohm resistors right here that are going to give me about two amps, just over two amps at 13.8 volts. So let's go ahead and power the unit on. And first, we'll give it two amps. 4 amps, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 amps. We're still regulating 13.56 volts at the terminals, and I have separate leads monitoring the voltage. I'm not monitoring the voltage over here through the alligator clip test leads. So I'm going to power the unit off, and instantly the voltage goes to zero. And I'm going to power it back on and make sure it can start under full load. And that's perfectly fine. Checking the temperature of the heat sink. It is warm, but I would say the transistors are at roughly the same temperature as the aluminum heat sink at this point. Anyhow, that's it, the repair on the Pyramid PS12KX. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching once again. Bye-bye.